Okay, so one of the most important things that you do in all of mathematics is simplify. So what does this word mean? Well, it pretty much means what it applies. You want to make something simpler than what it looks like. So for example, this expression right here, we're going to simplify without a calculator, but we'll get to this in just one second. Let me give you a simple example of simplifying. So let's suppose we had this fraction 100 over 200. Would you leave your answer like this? Well, hopefully not. Uh, you would say, well, you know what? 100 over 200 is equal to the fraction 1 half. So I will go ahead and reduce this fraction to a simpler fraction. Okay, now all of these numbers here, 100 over 200, is equivalent to 1 half. Uh, this is not like an optional thing. A lot of people think, well, you know what? I'll just leave my answer like this. I'm not going to go ahead and write it in its simpler uh, form because this value is equal to this value. Well, in mathematics, that is not a good idea. And if you leave your answers, uh, answers unsimplified on math questions, math exams, you're going to get in trouble, right? Your teacher is going to kind of mark tick points off or you're just going to be wrong. All right, so you have to simplify. And uh, again, this is not an optional thing. And if you are an algebra student, or if you're learning some sort of, or if you're in some sort of uh, math course that involves learning algebra, well, you absolutely must know how to simplify an expression like this. All right, so let's go and take a look at the problem. We have the square root of four over seven, four sevenths times 14 over three. We want to simplify this without a calculator. All right, now, if you could figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly what we need to do to simplify this expression. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the question one more time. So we have the square root of these two fractions. And of course, we're multiplying these two fractions and we're gonna take the square root of this. How can we simplify this? What should we do? Should we multiply the numerator and denominator or maybe should we just kind of break these up into separate uh, square roots? Well, there's different paths you can take. But uh, let's go to take a look at the right answer. And the correct answer is two times the square root of six over three. All right, now, if you got this right, you're definitely gonna get a happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of simplifying square roots and radicals. All right, now, in math, this symbol right here, okay, well, actually, I'll just kind of write it out. This is a square root but it's also a radical. So for those of you that are studying algebra and you're, uh, you know, you might be saying, hey, where do I find this in my math book or in my math course? Well, look under the unit or chapter called radical uh, expressions, radical equations, right? Because uh, here, this is a square root, but if I put a little three right here, well, now we have a cube root and it's no longer a square root. Again, this symbol right here is a radical. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. Okay, so first things first, uh, here is our expression. Now, what should we do? Okay, we have a fraction, and we're going to multiply it by another fraction. So there's different things that uh, we could do. We could be like, well, I can take 4 uh, times 14, and I get this answer. Then 7 times 3, I get this answer. Turn this into one fraction. Then maybe I can try to reduce that fraction. Well, uh, you know, if you multiply and then you try to reduce, well, it's just easier to kind of leave these as factors. But you cannot solve this or you cannot simplify uh, this expression uh, unless you understand some properties about square roots and radicals, all right? And this is going to be critical here. And uh, again, this is extremely important. Not that complicated, but if you don't understand these uh, properties, well, you're going to be lost. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. And I'm just going to give you a hint. What we're going to do, okay, step one, is we are going to simplify uh, uh, the stuff that's underneath the square root, okay, because we can simplify this fraction 
and then we're going to use some various properties and then we're going to have to take another step to finally get the right answer okay so let's go ahead and simplify we have four sevenths times uh, 14 over 3 so if you want to um, you know multiply these fractions together you know, all you're going to have to do is basically undo that because you want to you know get the simplest fraction underneath this square root so how do we find that well the easiest way to do that is the following okay so we have 4 over 7 times 14 over 3 just take this 7 7 goes into 14 two times now if you don't understand that you need to review how to work with fractions so 14 is the same thing as 7 times 2 now if I multiply the numerator and denominator all together I have all these factors right here and then of course I could cross cancel uh, these uh, like factors and then we're left with uh, 4 times 2 which will be 8 over 3 okay but uh, just to kind of make this uh, easier on ourselves and we kind of go back when you are multiplying fractions again you want to be at really good at cross canceling now this is all stuff that hopefully you learned way back in middle school or elementary school I'd rather so 7 goes into 14 two times so we're, we're left with 4 now down in the, den uh, the denominator here you might be saying well, what's left well there's always a 1 so we have 4 over 1 times 2 thirds all right so now we can multiply uh, the respective numerators and denominators so 4 times 2 over 1 times 3 is going to give us uh, 8 over 3 all right so now this is our problem we have the square root of 8 over 3 and if you put this as your answer you know uh, you were on the right track okay you just didn't finish the work and in order to finish up uh, this work you're going to have to understand some properties of square roots okay and there's one critical uh, why well, everything's critical but there's one particular uh, part of this problem that a lot of students don't take care of on a lot of tests and exams so if you understand this problem you are going to be uh, you know in a real good position uh, for your math exams all right so let's go and take the next step which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my youtube channel i'm not going to take too much time here but i definitely need your help to grow my channel to reach as many people as i possibly can the only way i can do that is to get as many people as possible to subscribe okay now i know a lot of you out there are probably saying hey mr youtube math man i don't really like it when you stop this video you stop all your videos and you ask us to subscribe yes i you know I can appreciate that okay so I acknowledge that that it's a, it might be you know a bit of an interruption that's you know maybe you know not what you want but listen I have to do what I have to do in order to reach as many people as I possibly can because I'm all about trying to teach math to again you know the biggest classroom that I can find all right so let's go ahead and move on to the rest of this problem as we have a lot of steps to cover now if you're struggling a bit here what you want to do after this video if you need some follow-on help check out my algebra one course okay you'll find a link to it in the description of this video if you are not a math student you're like i just need to brush up on math on my math skills then check out my math skills rebuilder course in this particular course by the way i go over basic uh, fraction skills and if you if you're lost with fractions if you just need good basic arithmetic uh, review check out my math foundations course again you can find links to all these in the description all right so let's talk about this property that we need in order to uh, simplify this square root so we have the square root of uh, eight thirds right eight over three so when you have one big square root over a fraction there's a property of square roots that says we can break up this one big square root into individual square roots over the numerator and denominator so the square root of eight over uh, three eight thirds is equal to the square root of eight over the square root of three and this is what we want to do all right now uh, here where you you know you might be saying well how about this mr youtube math man is this fully simplified nope far from it <laughs> we got some work to do all right so let's go ahead and talk about the next steps and the next step here is to uh think about this in the denominator i'm actually showing you the results let me go back here i apologize uh, we have a problem here now you could i'm going to show you the work just one second here's the problem okay so we broke this up into individual square root square root eight over the square root of three now here okay this is not allowed in math okay so not allowed so what what am i talking about well you can't have the square root 
uh, in a, uh, when we have a fraction, it can't have the squ a square root in the denominator. Not any square root. You could have like the square root of 4 because the square root of 4 is 2. I'm talking about things like the square root of 3 because if you go into your calculator and you try to find the square root of 3, you're going to get some long decimal. Well, this decimal is going to go till infinity, and it's not going to repeat or terminate. So these type of numbers right here are called irrational numbers. Okay, so it doesn't make sense. I'm like, I'm trying to divide uh, some, something by a number that, you know, goes on and on and on, and it doesn't have any repeating pattern, and it doesn't stop. So in math, we do not like that. So although we need to break this up, we need to address this situation. So here, we have to take this step by um, uh, basically having these two individual square roots. But now we have to address this square root in the denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and address that. How do we do that? We're going to multiply this entire thing by 1. Okay, we're going to multiply by 1. Now you might say, hey, I don't see the 1, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, let me ask you. Anything divided by itself is what? Well, 10 divided by 10 is 1. How about um, 7 divided by 7? Well, that's 1. How about uh, 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds? You get the idea. Uh, anything divided by itself is 1. Square root of 3 uh, divided by the square root of 3 is 1. And anything uh, that we multiply by 1 is just what we get, what we have, right? So if we take this thing and multiply by 1, we don't really change the value. So this is kind of a, um, a special one because uh, this square root of 3 over square root of 3 is going to solve our problem in terms of getting this uh, square root uh, out of the denominator, okay? All right, so but basically the procedure is this. Whatever you want to get out of the, den uh, the denominator here, we have the square root of 3, just create a fraction. We have the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and then you're, you're going to multiply. But, you know, I like to explain why we're doing this because it helps students remember you know, um, you know, you just don't want to learn everything by rote memorization. In other words, like flashcard memory, you know, I, I do this, when I see this, I do that, that, that. You want to get comprehension of what's going on. All right, so now let's go ahead and multiply uh, these two fractions that have square roots, and we're going to use our other, um, kind of the reverse of this property that we were looking at over here. Matter of fact, though, this is a separate property, um, and that property is the following. When you're multiplying two square roots, okay, so these, pop, these properties are similar. Let me erase this here and uh, kind of talk about this property just in case anyone's confused. If I have the square root of 2, if you have the square root of 2 and we want to multiply by the square root of 3, well, because these are both square roots, I can just write the square root of 2 times 3, okay? Now, if I have the square root of 6, I can break this up in terms of its factors. Well, the square root of 6 is the same thing as square root of 2 times 3, and then I could break these up into square root of 2 times the square root of 3. So it's kind of, you know, doing the reverse of the same property, right? So here we have two square roots. We're dealing with fractions, so we're going to have to multiply what's underneath these square roots under one square root. So 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have the square root of 24 over the square root of 9. Now, I like to really take my time and explain this because a lot of people get lost with these concepts, all right? Again, uh, you know, we've already used a couple different properties, and uh, we are not done. All right, but what was the advantage of doing this? Well, here we have the square root of 9, and, of course, we can simplify the square root of 9 because that is 3. All right, so let's go ahead and do that step right now. So we have the square root of 24 over the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and now we have the square root of 24 over 3, and uh, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, are we done? Uh, can we just finish this problem? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. Okay, we are not done. So, uh, you know, this is going to change a lot of expressions like this. What are you talking about? Well, we have to simplify the numerator now. So we have the square root of 24. Now, how do we know this can be simplified? Well, you don't know, but you have to think about these numbers here. All right, these are uh, really critical numbers and um, when you're talking about square roots, these are called perfect squared factors. So we have numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. What do these numbers have in common? Well, when we take the square root of these numbers, we get lovely whole numbers, right? The square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. You get the idea. So these are perfect square factors. Now, here, okay, 
uh, we have our perfect squares rather, uh, you want to look and you want to see if your um, number, your value underneath the square root has potentially a factor, okay, that is a perfect square, all right? So in other words, could I write 24 <clears throat> as um, the product, excuse me, of a perfect square? So maybe like four times six. Well, four is a perfect square. So if you have a perfect square within your number, you're going to have to simplify. All right, so let's see how this works. So we have the square root of 24 over three, so our denominator is fine, but we have a perfect square here in this number, so we have the square root of four times six. So here we have this one big square root over four times six, four times six is obviously 24, but now we could break this square root up into two individual square roots, so the square root of four uh, times six is equal to the square root of four times the square root of six, and now finally we can simplify uh, we have the square root of 4, that is 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 6 over 3. And now finally, 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 we are done. All right, so not so trivial of a task to simplify square root expressions and radicals. But you really have to know this very, very well in algebra. And if you're like, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just going to leave my answer as is and just kind of take my uh, chances. Well, if you do that, you know, you're going to maybe pass, you know, your math class with a C uh, or C plus or C minus. You know what? But why settle on that? OK, just take these few steps. Learn these skills. Oftentimes what I've found over many, many decades, people that are struggling in math, maybe getting grades that they're not, you know, really happy with. They're only a few skills away from taking these C's and turning them into A's. But the only uh, way you're going to know what skills those are is to ask for help. Go to your teacher and say, hey, look, what do I know? What don't I know? You should be looking at your uh, test exams, you know. But here's the deal, all right? This is, I'll leave this as my last point for this video. If you know that you are weak in some area of math, okay, you're like, oh, I'm terrible at fractions. And so oftentimes uh, people know this. Like, I'm the worst at fractions and uh, order of operations. I always mess that up. Well, that's great that you know that because this is what you need to work on, okay? Just make yourself a little checklist. Matter of fact, you can do this right now. If you want to quickly improve in math, make yourself a little list of what you think you're good at and what you think you're, what you think you're bad at, right? So the good stuff, you're like, oh, I'm really good at uh, decimals and equations, whatever the case is, write a little list down. And then what you're bad at, write that down as well. Now, here's what you want to do. You want to verify all these things that you think you're good at, because once you start doing some problems here, you know, some of these might actually go into the bad column. OK, so but once you've identified your weak areas, this is what you need to start reviewing. OK, one step at a time. And when you start uh, improving these skills and okay? just take them one by one. Okay. Everything is going to get so much better. I promise. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.